Wesatihale, each hot te adwina, and welcome to English Meet Adwina. This is the second video on Old English Declension, and today we're going to be looking at end nouns, which you might have also heard of as weak nouns. Um, so these are the nama, tunge, and aade declensions. So end nouns, these are traditionally known as weak nouns from the Brothers Grimm's terminology. As I pointed out last time, they like the words strong and weak, and they use them in all sorts of places. They use them for nouns, they use them for adjectives, and they use them for verbs, which is kind of confusing. As I said in the last video, weak means showing less change, but uh, calling them end nouns makes more sense to me and leaves weak free to describe verbs because it's a lot easier to use weak verb than weak noun. Um, and I just prefer to keep the two separate. Um, so the end nouns, as the name suggests, uh, are characterized by an N, which is present in most forms. There's very little influence of the end noun declension on modern English. Most nouns simply became regular S plurals, regular strong plurals. If we go back, nama, tunge, are, these are name, tongue, and I. And in Old English, all of these were end nouns, but in Modern English, names, tongues, eyes. So very little influence. It remains in the word oxen, the only word that is still like this. And it's also the source of the N in the irregular plurals like children, brethren, and so on and so forth. Those might be the only two that are actually like that, but those are the remains of the end nouns in modern English. These are much more similar across the three genders. However, there's still slight differences between the declensions, which we'll notice, and most forms end in on. So let's look first at the masculine. The singular endings, nominative a, genitive on, accusative on, dative on. Plural, nominative on, genitive in a, Accusative on and dative um. And so we have our example noun here, which is nama, which means name, as I just said. So nama, naman, 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 namina, naman, namum. Another such word is junta, which means hunter. So decline it yourself, pause the video. So the correct answer is singular. Junta, Hunton, Hunton, Hunton. Plural, Hunton, Huntina, Hunton, Huntum. Moving on to the feminine. Notice that this is very similar to the masculine one. The only difference is that the singular nominative ends in E instead of A. Now, luckily, this means that you can see the difference, but all the other forms are exactly the same. Nominative E, genitive on, accusative on, dative on. Plural nominative on, genitive en a, accusative on, dative um. So our example word is tunge, which means tongue. So tunge, tungan, 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 tunge na, tungan, tungum. Notice that I'm saying tunge and not tunge. So you say the G. It is not tunge, it is tunge. That's irrelevant, but just making that note. Another such word is herte, which means heart. To find it yourself, pause the video. The correct answer is herte, herton, 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 hertena, herton, hertum. Pretty simple. Very similar to the masculine one. Just note that e. Eh. And the last one is, of course, the neuter which is the are declension. And again, notice this is very similar to the feminine one. The only difference between it and feminine is that accusative singular, it's also e instead of on. So that's the only difference. All the other endings are the same. So singular, nominative, e, genitive, on. Accusative, e, dative, on. Plural, nominative, on, genitive, en a, Accusative on, dative um. In the plural, all three of these are exactly the same. It's only in the singular that they differ. 
So our example word is are, which means I. So we have are, aron, are, aron, aron, arno, aron, arum. And for the neuter, there is actually only other one such word, are, which means ear. Declining yourself, pause the video. So the correct answer is are, aron, are, aron. Aron, areno, aron, arum. So, final thoughts. Because all three of these declensions are so similar, be extra careful to learn them properly. They are like one ending apart from each other. So, just be sure. So, with this video and the previous video on the strong declensions, we've hit two largest declensions. This is most nouns in Old English. The next video will be about minor declensions. Some of these are only like three words. So this and the previous video are the majority. The next video is the minority. Thank you so much for watching. This has been English Meet Alduino. Please stay subscribed. Thank you for watching.